All right, guys. Here I have a '96 Sea-Doo XP 787 motor. Um, I have had no luck finding rebuild videos on YouTube or anywhere on the internet. Uh, I've had to search up and down on different forums for information on these motors. So I decided I'm going to make a video, seeing that I've built this motor from the ground up now. Um, I did already put the bottom case together, so I can't actually go through and show you everything I did inside, but it's really not too complicated inside. All you have is a crankshaft and a counterbalance shaft on the 787. Any smaller motor does not have the counterbalance shaft. That's in the back here. And you got one sealed bearing on one side, and your other sealed bearing is right behind your stator cover or flywheel cover whichever you call it um, the crank i will put pictures of when i split mine and show you know how to clean it what torque for the main bolts underneath and um and give you all the information you need before you remove your crank because Supposedly, there is timing marks on your crankshaft and your counterbalance shaft to where the gears touch. Um, and I'll circle that in a picture and post it on here for you. But mine did not have any timing marks for where they line up. And if you take it out and you don't mark where it was, you're basically shit out of luck on putting it back together. Because then your motor will be shaking like crazy and something bad's going to happen. Um, I, before I removed mine, I made a mark on two gears on one of the sides, on the counterbalance gear. And then I made a mark on the gear that went inside those two on the crankshaft gear. Um, I actually dremeled little shiny spots on them so I knew when I put it back together the one tooth had to go between the other two teeth for it to line up properly. Um, it's pretty basic for the bottom end. The only thing I was not able to do, which is a pain in the ass from what I have read online, is remove this PTO. Um, some people wedge things inside the crank and pry it off with a five foot bar. I did not want to crack my case. The seal looked fine when I removed it. Um, it did have 200 hours on this motor, which worries me a little bit, but I was not able to get it off. I left it on there, um, and I'm just hoping for the best with that. Every other seal in here got replaced. Uh, I'm waiting on my Pro X Pistons. Um, I myself am not a WSM fan or SBT on parts. The only thing I really use is their gaskets and stuff. As you can see, I got the SBT full rebuild kit. Um, when you put the crankcase back together from the factory, it is naturally uh, sealed with no sealer. There's no sealant in there. They made it so true that it had no leaks. When I put it back together, I put a very thin layer of high temp RTV, and that's what I read on forums, just a very light coat because technically you don't need it, but it's better to have something there sealing it than nothing. Um, all of the bottom bolts on the crankshaft side of the case were 30 foot-pounds and all the smaller bolts on the counterbalance side of the case um, I'll double check again but I believe those were 16 foot-pounds I will post it below um, the bottom end was fairly easy and I got the stator cover back on or flywheel cover. Um, I still got to tighten down the nut for that to get it on there. I got to go get the right socket, but there is one gasket that goes behind it. Um, no O-rings or anything behind it, just the one gasket. 
and you put all your bolts back in that are behind the flywheel. You can see a couple of them back there. There was 10 of those and I did not get the torque specs on those. Uh, you can say what you want, but any small bolts, I don't really do torque specs on them. I just snug them down and get a good feel for it. Um, if you're taking the risk of rebuilding your whole motor, that's up to you if you want to look up the torque specs on anything small. But even these uh, rotary plate bolts, I did not get torque specs on those. I just I snug them down. I always have done them like that. Uh, the main ones I worry about are the cylinder head bolts that go in here and all these. I'll get the torque specs on those. And the crankshaft bolts. Everything else I just get a good snug all around in a crisscross pattern and then I go back in a circle and make sure everything is on there correctly. Um, for this motor, I'll post the pictures of when I took it apart, but it was ugly. I sandblasted the entire thing. I took it down to the original bare metal. I sandblasted out all the insides the best I could from all the corrosion. And I repainted and I cleared everything, every single part of this motor. From top to bottom. Still got tape covering everything up because I had it sitting together so nothing would get inside of it. But um, I took it apart because my pistons should be here any day now and I can start putting it all back together and I will record that also. Also, I know there's a big problem with these starters arcing right near the connection of where the starter meets the case of it. So I sandblasted the whole groove and I put a gasket sealer around it because nothing I would do seemed to help get rid of that arc and if you have fuel or fumes or anything inside your hull and you get that spark it's not going to be good you're not going to have a ski left after that so I figured I'd try that we'll see how that works after I get it running hopefully it does not get that arc inside my hull anymore um, I even tried another starter and it did the same thing. And I grounded the starter with a new ground and it still did the same thing. I tried everything. Um, but that's pretty much it for the bottom end. I will have more videos coming on putting the whole top end together. Um, all new wrist pin bearings, Pro X pistons. Um, if you do decide to go with Wiseco pistons, those you need to bore your cylinders a little bit bigger and you'd have to get the specs from the piston you order but Wiseco are forged therefore they expand more when they heat up and your motor will seize if you do not bore it out for the proper clearances um, I used Pro-X because they're not forged and they're 
built specifically for a stock size of the cylinder bore. Mine were not too bad when I took it apart. So I went and I uh, honed it out and they came out pretty good. I'm going to hone it out one more time before I put it all back together just to make sure they're nice and clean and get a good cross hatch. And, um, and that's about it. So I will finish up with this right now and I'll get back to you guys when I get the top end kit. Alright, another topic I wanted to get on was with the oil that some of these 787's take in the counterbalance shaft which is back here. As you can see this doesn't have a plug. There's no screwdriver slot, there's no allen bolt, there's nothing. There's supposed to be oil in here and it actually does get lubricated by your uh, rear cylinder <clears throat> which is um, it's lubricated by your fuel mixture from the oil coming in with your gas. Um, also another thing if you have one of these please bypass the oil injection that is the most common failure on these things and it's a complete waste if you don't pass it because your motor will fry when you don't even know it stops working. So that's one thing I would recommend highly. Delete the oil injection, get the block off plate, and keep the oil fed to your um, gear going through the rotary. Because if you don't, that'll seize up too. Um, you have one oil inlet right here, and the outlet is over here which runs back to your oil tank so you will keep your oil tank hooked up just not to the rotary plate uh, for the inlet on the carbs so bypass those put little rubber caps on them or you can pull those completely out and you can block them with maybe JB weld or something but make sure you do it right so nothing gets sucked in um, but back to this People kept telling me I was supposed to put oil in there before I put the case back together um, until I kept reading and reading and reading on the forums that this is connected to your crankshaft gear because that part of your crankshaft gear gets lubricated from the gas and oil coming into your cylinder. So therefore, it'll come off of that gear and go right into this housing also. But on a fresh rebuild, it's dry back here and up here. And you can put assembly lube uh, just to make sure it has lubrication and you don't get a dry start. But they recommend that you put an oil in this little hole because these do not have a cap to put oil in here. And only the newer models, I believe above, I want to say maybe 2000, they started putting a filler cap and a drain plug underneath because they are actually sealed off from each other where that one is its own chamber and this one is its own chamber. So I'm going to put 30 milliliters of some two stroke in there just to make sure that doesn't get a dry start. But either way, no matter what you put in that hole to fill this, it is going to burn up from this cylinder eventually anyway because it's connected to it. So I'm pretty much only doing it for a dry start. Everything I researched to say that it's not going to stay in there, especially if you roll your ski, then whatever oil is sitting in the bottom part of this cap is going to go directly into your rear cylinder anyway. So again, I'm just trying to help someone else out because I didn't know anything about it. Someone brought it up and uh, I thought I screwed up by not putting oil in there before I put the case back together. But you do not have to because I found out it has that little pinhole which leads directly back straight into here. And I saw it in the SeaDo manual online also. I just got done looking at it. So that's just another one I wanted to inform you guys on so you don't have to sit there and keep researching that also. Um, whatever pointers I have, um, I will put in the video if I miss something. You can comment or message me and um, I will answer you the best I can and I can also find the diagrams for this motor pretty easily now I found a whole page on them. But one more thing, your rotary timing. Um, 
I'll try to include a picture with it, but this is pretty easy to time your rotary valve in there. You have to set this cylinder closest to your stator. You have to set that top dead center, perfectly top dead center, the best you can, to where your rod is maxed out at its height. And then you put a degree wheel, you take this off, you put a degree wheel on there, and there's a there's stuff online that shows you what to line it up with but you need to line it up a certain way and then your timing mark is going to be over this way and your your plate goes on this way so the opening is at the top right and it's gonna be as you can see my plate is right there and I'm pretty much at top dead center right now it could be turned a little bit right about there and the plate is going to be on this side and open on this side. Um, so it's going to be this way. And if you're off by your, on your mark by just like a hair, it's okay. Because they say if you're off by a, a tooth, it would be fine. But it's never going to be 100% most of the time. It's always going to be off just a little bit next to that, um, that mark you make from the uh, degree wheel. So that's really not too hard either, but um, definitely time it before you put it together um, into the ski because you, it's kind of hard when it's in the ski. You might have to use a mirror because this is under your exhaust manifold, and it definitely makes it kind of a pain in the ass um, trying to bend over the ski and look in it upside down and you know all that fun stuff that you're used to with skis. Um, I'm not going to go over all the size of these bolts because if you're willing to take this whole motor apart I'm pretty sure you know how to use tools or at least I hope so. But common Allen wrenches all around, um, 10 millimeter, 12 millimeter, stuff like that, all the basic stuff you need. Um, nothing too hard about this motor. It's really, really basic. There's not much to it because it's a two-stroke. Um, there's no valves like a two-stroke dirt bike or anything like that, no reed valves, it's all rotary, um, so it is very easy. Um, if you do need to look up torque specs for other things that I did not include, uh, the SeaDo website does have um, the whole manual for all kinds of skis out there, and everything I've seen on there um, was pretty helpful. Um, this video is just to save some people a lot of time researching because <clears throat> I've put nights and nights and nights of research for this motor just to make sure it comes out 100% and so far it's coming together pretty good um, and I'll finish up with the top end kit show you, show you how to install the wrist pin bearings and the uh, wrist pins and pistons and rings and all that stuff and which way the rings go on and you know all that stuff so there is different type of piston rings for different pistons the OEM pistons, they just have a flat, solid ring. You could put it in either way, upside down, right side up. Um, <clears throat> top one is an L-shaped ring. I don't know if you can see that. It's got a groove more on one side than the other. Um, these have to go a certain way compared to the Pro X. They are both the same as the bottom ring, so they both just go in whichever whichever way I believe so uh, more of the video will be coming up next I'm going to try and make this one whole video instead of breaking it up so I'm doing this in parts um, so we'll get back to it alright I removed my rotary valve cover so I can make this video and I borrowed a template so I can show you guys how to do this um, first thing you want to do for your timing put your um, flywheel cylinder top dead center as high you know max it out as high as it'll go until that rod is all the way up to the top that way you can put your timing correctly because if that's not perfectly top dead center um, it might run a little off so now that that's top dead center you take your degree wheel and you put your 360 degree mark right below your flywheel side port which is right there right below it like that 
Now you're going to find 147 on the inner numbers and the 787 calls for a 147 degree timing. So you make your little mark. I made a red mark but mine's also uh, scratched in so you can see it good. Um, so once you make that 147 you'll take that degree wheel off now, if you go to put your rotary valve on, see mine is kind of engraved into the uh, housing. There's a little scratch mark for it, but I put a little red dot just to show you also. Um, if you go to put this on, and as you can see, if I put it on like that, it's not going to line up. And if I go one more tooth, then I'm going too far, then you got to flip your plate and try again. And right there that's as close as you're going to get. So if you're off a hair like that, it's fine because you, your top dead center might have been off by a hair. Um, the farthest it would be away is what you saw before when I flipped the plate. It would have been way over here or way over here. So you're right there next to it. That's pretty damn close. You're like a sixteenth of an inch off, so that's fine. So that's how you set your timing on the 787. That is also how you set the timing on the other motors um, but they have a different timing degree so just make sure you use 147 as your timing degree on the 787 motor um, after that uh, before you mount it and tighten your cover on there if you split your cases already and did all this you're gonna have this this little line running across where your case seams together lightly sand it if it feels rough um, just because your plate is going to be rubbing on this in circles and you don't want that to start burning up. Um, I just went over it lightly with some sandpaper, uh, very fine sandpaper just to make sure it's nice and smooth. Um, also if you did silicone the case, you'll have silicone sticking out right here so you gotta you know, shave it off with a razor blade or just pull it off with your fingernail and, and then go over it with sandpaper and sand this whole surface in a circular motion just to make sure it's nice and clean and uh, also I went over this it looks kind of bad but it's actually really smooth um, I went over it with uh, one of these SOS pads just to clean off any um, any rough spots on it so it's nice and smooth when I put it back together um, and then after that you just put your new o-ring on your cover and make sure it's on the right way and you'll put that back on there with your um, rotary valve and that's pretty much it for the timing so uh, there's more videos coming for the top end my pistons are coming tomorrow all right I got the Pro X pistons this is what they look like two of the same style rings there's no bevel on them except for hang on one second Uh, the only bevel they have is where that ring goes up against that little pin. The pin is higher than center, so the bevel of that ring goes just below it. And there's two of those little spots on there. And make sure your rings go right around that spot when you go to uh, compress the rings, or else it's not really going to get into your cylinder the right way and if it does go into your cylinder it's going to score your whole cylinder see that little pin right in the center right there your ring needs to go right up against that both sides of it and your arrow on the piston right there that goes towards your exhaust side which is this side on your rotary valve um, putting the little circlips in here which are those right there can be a big pain it's hard for me to get a video of how to do it but if you search um, how to install circlip on pistons there's many videos that come up I just uh, that's the hardest part for me is getting one of those in there especially when you go to put the second one in after you put your wrist pin on um, with the wrist pin bearing you're going to sit like this 
you'll slide your wrist pin through the other side and up against this clip and then you got to put the clip onto the other side so that's the hardest part is when it's already on the motor two of them you can do one on each side on the bench like I already did and then um, you'll go ahead and put the wrist pin bearings these you put them with assembly lube into your rod and then you'll put your piston on and slide your wrist pin through and then put the other circlet but make sure you use assembly lube you can go buy it at AutoZone um, it's red just to make sure you don't get a dry start because you'll melt this thing if there's no lubrication on it and then you're screwed so make sure you use assembly lube and not WD-40 or oil or anything because that's just going to run off right into the bottom alright before you do the top end I already put 25 mLs of oil in there each one of these syringes is 5 mLs so you're just going to put that in that little hole that goes into that chamber in the back and put 30 mLs down into that hole just like that and it'll fill this right here because there's no fill plug so that's exactly what that little hole right there is for right there so that's just so you don't get a dry start on that gear with the uh, bearings back there and keep the seals lubricated um, so you make sure you put that in there I didn't know about it until I started reading up on it um, but it says that in the uh, in the owner's manual also and there's also one over on this side so I'm going to put some in there too um, I'm going to put 30 in each one so just make sure you add that in there before you uh, put your top end together alright guys what you're going to do now you're going to take your needle bearing and you want to put I got this uh, assembly lube from Lucas that's all I could find I lost my other one um, but this one's green instead of red my other one was green or my other one was red um, this one just put it all over here and you want to you want to roll it all into there get it all over this will prevent you from getting a dry start on your brand new motor so you want to make sure you get a lot on there it's just going to burn off once your motor starts warming up anyway so it doesn't matter if you put too much plus after you run your motor the first time for a few you know a few runs change out your plugs because all the oil that you put in the bottom end um, I also put some drops down inside the crankcase on each spot I could see uh, for the of two stroke um, just to make sure nothing gets a, a dry start um, but you want to change your plugs after a few runs on your brand new motor just to make sure because um, those are going to get covered in oil um, you put a little bit of oil on your pin the wrist pin also because that's going to be going in through there you just rub that around on there get it coated real good because that's going to end up going in there like so so you put these into your connecting rod do one at a time <coughs> and you'll take your piston make sure your arrow is facing the exhaust port side so you pretty much all you're going to do you can start your wrist pin and get it in there until it's just about to the center stick it on top of the rod just find the center work your pin all the way through until it's touching this clip here and then you'll put your other C-clip on the other side uh, the little circlet that holds the wrist pin in uh, like I said, that's that's the hardest part. It gives me the most hassle out of anything really with this motor. Um, everything goes together fairly well, except you just got to put a little bit of strength into putting those on there. Um, and like I said, it it, would, it takes a few minutes to get one of them in there, and I can't get a good camera angle to show you. Um, so if you need to look up a video for that, um, those pop up. There's a whole bunch of them. 
Uh, I'm trying to make this video as short as I can so the upload speed won't take forever. Um, but that's how you put that together. And uh, that's for your piston to pivot on. So I'll get these, um, I'll get both pistons on. Um, and then we will start going ahead and putting the gasket on, putting each cylinder on. I'll show you how to compress the rings. And also you want to put, I put assembly lube on these also. Uh, just because they're going to be sitting in the cylinder and I'll also put assembly lube all around the inside of the cylinder just like a, a thin amount of it um, so it is going to smoke quite a bit when you first start it but it's okay uh, it's just you know a little bit of oil that's going to burn off anyway so it won't harm anything unless you if you pack it in there I mean you're gonna have you're gonna have a mess but just put a little bit um, I already filled both of these pinholes with 30 mLs of two-stroke and um, not with gas, just oil by itself. And uh, so I'll, I'll get the rest of these put together and then we will uh, do the video on the cylinders. Alright, when you get ready to put everything together, you want to clean the base right here with acetone and the bottom of your cylinder where it's going to meet the gasket. You want to clean that with acetone, make sure you got no dirt anywhere on here. I already put some uh, assembly lube inside the cylinder and all over the rings on the piston. And uh, so we just got to put the gasket on there and then put the first cylinder on. You want to bring this piston up as high as you can. Now you got to compress your rings on those two little sections that they have to go on to. If you squeeze them, get them ready with two hands. Try one ring. And then the other ring. And slide it straight down. Make sure your gasket's right so you don't mess it up. And try to guide that right down to where you're going. Well, the camera fell, but that's what it's going to look like after you get the first one on there. Now the next thing you have to do, this one on here leads to the other one on the other cylinder. So you have to connect your hose here with a T that's going to run out and then back this way. So you have to make sure you have that stuff pre-cut. Um, and measured out. This was my old T. You can tell it's pretty nasty. I had a new one to put on there. So uh, get those on there and um, you know make sure it's measured right because you have to put this on or it's easier to put this on and then slide the other one down and connect it to it. Um, so that's the next thing I'm going to do. Another thing too, I like to put this red thread lock on any of the main bolts like the crank bolts and the um, cylinder bolts. So just put a little thin layer across the bottom of the threads here. Don't overdo it because you'll never get it apart again. Um, so make sure you put your long bolts go in the front, your short bolts go in the back. And uh, I included the torque specs on the video already. Alright, you're going to crank these down just with a regular ratchet at first. Get them all kind of snug. Already did this one. And you're going to take your torque wrench. And in a crisscross pattern, you're going to start to snug these bolts down. And 
set to 30 foot pounds. Those are all torqued down. Next thing you can do is put your seals in the top here. Make sure you do the inner O-ring for the piston. The inner O-ring, which is these right here. Those will lay inside. And then you'll take your square gaskets, which are these, and those go inside your outer edge here. This is what it's going to look like. I know it's still kind of corroded inside my ports, but that's the best I could get it clean with the sand blaster. Um, you're going to get your gaskets in there, middle o-ring, outer gaskets, push them in down there really good because they're kind of tough to get in there. Uh, then you're going to put your top on. Um, this will only go on one way because the cylinders are kind of offset to the rear side if you can see that. Um, so you'll set this right on top. Line it up good. And then put the top plate, well you gotta put these seals on. I'm just doing this real quick to show you guys, I'm not putting it on yet. I still gotta clean all my bolts. But you're gonna put these O-rings right on here where the spark plugs go. Just like that. And then you'll put this on. Going that way. And that's it. And then put all your bolts in. Crank them down. Put your plugs in. And then put your exhaust on. Um, the exhaust is really easy. Just all them bolts. Um, the manifold goes on only one way. So that's pretty simple. I'm not going to do a video on that. Um, carbs, carbs get bolted straight to here, and your flame arrestor and your air box. Um, all the throttle linkage underneath is pretty basic, so I'm not really going to go over that little stuff with you. Um, the stator cover, all I got to do is put the cover back on. It's already got the oil um, block off plate for the oil pump. So I already got my new o ring in here. Just got to put my new gasket on there, put my exhaust bracket back on, and and then I'm ready to put it back in the ski. I'm going to attach these hoses to the motor first, um, especially on your back one. This one here, that one is going to be almost impossible to get to when you put your motor back in. Um, I've heard of many people complaining about it, so I'm just going to do it first. And that way all I have to do is connect the hose up to my oil tank um, and make sure you run that because that's going to lubricate your uh, shaft inside for the rotary if you don't it's going to lock up on you because there's a bearing in there and you'll think you fried the motor but you won't it'll be the rotary shaft so please make sure you run this when people say you can bypass the oil injection it doesn't mean you're only mixing your fuel you still need to run lubrication to the bottom on each side here to make sure that uh, you get oil flow to the rotary gear. Um, that's pretty much it on this video. I'm not going to show tightening down these because that's pretty basic. Everything else on here is pretty uh, self-explanatory. These are, these are basic. I already changed all those inside. Um, new boots, new o-rings, new gaskets. So. Uh, that's pretty much it. If anyone has any questions, go ahead and comment on the video. And um, I'll do my best to give you my opinion. Uh, I've learned pretty much 
everything there is to know about this motor. If I missed anything or you wanted me to include some other information, just let me know. Um, other than that though, that's about it. So I'm going to go ahead and finish up with the video. Uh, go ahead and subscribe to me. Um, I'm going to be posting some more videos on here. Um, I do a lot of fishing, jet skiing, um, a lot of different stuff. I'll be doing reviews on uh, I got my daughter a little Chinese four-wheeler, Apollo, so I'll be doing videos on those, um, reviews, um, just little things that I get. I'm going to start doing some different videos here and there, so uh, let me know if there's anything you would like a review done on, and I'll see if I'm able to do it. I have a lot of experience with um, different four-wheelers and dirt bikes and Chinese stuff and people that think they might be junked and they're actually pretty reliable. Um, other than that, uh, like the video, subscribe, and uh, that's about it. Thanks, guys.